Hello, my name is Antoine from ATM Tech and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna delve into a topic which on the surface sounds pretty straightforward, but when you delve into it, it's actually a little bit more complicated and that's which Xbox should you get? The Xbox One X or the Xbox Series S? But before we get into that, let's run the intro. This topic is actually pretty personal for me because I literally just went through this dilemma myself. And spoiler alert, I went for the Xbox One X. But how did I get there and what factors did I take into consideration? On the surface of things, it seems pretty obvious which one you should get. You're comparing an old generation device to a brand new generation device. But from my own research, I actually found it was way more complicated than that. We're not gonna talk about the Xbox Series X because if you clicked on this video, chances are one, it's way out of budget or two, you missed the bar on pre-orders and you know you're gonna to have to wait months for it. So to give a bit of backstory, I haven't owned an Xbox since the Xbox 360. I've always been a Sony man, PS1, PS2, PS3 and the PS4. So when I started doing my research on the Xbox Series S, the good things about it that stood out were 1440p, 120 hertz targeted resolution, the super fast SSD, and then of course the fantastic price at just £249. There did seem to be quite a lot of negatives about the machine. The first one was there's no disk drive, which on its own is fine, but then the storage is only 500 gigabytes and games today, their download files are absolutely huge. Games like Call of Duty, Gears of Wars, they're 100 gig plus. You can expand the storage, but there is one big caveat. You can store your games on any old hard drive, but you can only play them from their proprietary expandable SSD, which costs more than the console itself. And it's just a terabyte. So to me, right off the bat, you're kind of backed into a corner when it comes to storage, and you're gonna end up spending as much as you would have if you just bought a Series X in the first place. So the second negative isn't necessarily the console's fault per se, it's more technology's fault. And that's the 1440p at 120 hertz resolution. For those of you that might not be aware, 1440p is in between 1080p and 4K. A lot of people still have 1080p TVs, but quite a few more people are having 4K TVs. Where the trouble lies is, is the fact that nine out of 10 consoles are played on a TV. For 99 out of 100 people watching this video right now, I promise you, your TV cannot output 1440p in 120 hertz. Now, if you have a high-end gaming monitor, it's probably more than capable of doing that, but your TV cannot do it. You need either DisplayPort, which TVs just generally don't have, or HDMI 2.0, which again, most TVs don't have. So if you're plugging in Xbox Series S into your 4K TV, you're either gonna get 1440p at 60 hertz or 1080p at 60 hertz, or you're gonna have to spend big money on a nice, big, expensive, brand new TV. Again, bumping up your cost of entry. Now let's look at the Xbox One X. So first of all, targeted output 4K 60 frames. Although the Xbox One X came out later on in the Xbox One timeline, there are over 150 enhanced titles that will unlock the Xbox One X's additional processing power. So not every game will play at 4K 60, but what these enhancements will bring is a combination of HDR, 4K, high refresh rate, or in some cases, all three. The Xbox One X has a disk drive and it also has one terabyte of storage. So there's none of that storage anxiety I talked about with the Xbox Series X. The price, that was definitely a big one for me. So I bought mine secondhand for just 150 pounds. Now, when you consider that the Xbox One X only came out three years ago at close to 500 pounds, I would say that's a pretty good price. And I mentioned price again, because chances are, if you're looking at either of these two consoles, you'll probably be price sensitive. So when actually comparing these two consoles, you've got 1440p at 120 Hertz versus 4K 60. You've got no disk drive, but super fast storage versus disk drive and large storage. Then you've got having to get a new TV to actually take advantage of the power versus your existing TV just working already. So there's pros and cons for each console. And the thing that ultimately swayed me and made me decide to get the Xbox One X is the fact that Microsoft are really pushing for all games to be available across both generations. Microsoft have already come out and said that new generation games will be supported on the Xbox One consoles. Phil Spence, Mr. Xbox himself, has also said he wants new generation games to be accessible to all. He doesn't want anyone to feel left behind because they're playing on the older generation. So for the first few years at the very least, I'm not gonna miss out on any games and I'm gonna be able to play them at higher resolution than the Xbox Series S. 
Yes, it's only going to be at 60 hertz, but my TV doesn't support 120 hertz anyway, so I'm not losing out. Now, there are a few more nuances to this conversation, and ultimately, a new generation game on the Xbox Series S is going to look a little bit better than it would do on the Xbox One X. The Xbox Series S does have a more powerful GPU, so it is going to render graphics just that little bit better. But if you are looking for the best of the best, then you wouldn't even be looking at these consoles anyway, you'd be looking at the Xbox Series X. There's also the fact that the Series S is sold out everywhere and you're probably not going to get your hands on one until next year anyway. For me, there were just too many pros on the Xbox One X and in the end, the decision was quite easy. Anyway, I do hope you find this video useful. In my research, I was trawling all through YouTube and I just thought I'd add in my own two cents on this situation. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.